Day 20. I keep having so many dreams. I don't dream in the other world. Not that I remember. Not even like little bits of them. But out here, it's like I've been saving them all up and they've just been haunting me. I don't know. They're all nightmares. That's all I've ever had my whole life. I've had one good dream that I remember. Never had a sexual dream, which is weird because I'm totally a pervert, but never. No, they're always violent, scary. I don't get to remember a whole lot of them. I just, this last one, I just remember I was so angry. Just so angry. Couldn't stop breaking and punching stuff. I don't know why. It was like I was throwing a tantrum. I don't know, but I wake up all sweaty. That one wasn't necessarily a nightmare, but it was the best I could remember. Um, but every night I've been just waking up from dreams, you know, and I, I know I had them, but I can't quite remember what they are. I just remember the feelings when I wake up. It's like I suppressed them all for years or something. They're all coming back to haunt me or something. Every night, every night, dreams, dreams, dreams. Hmm. What does it mean? About nothing. Oh, okay. So I woke up later than usual, 3.30. That's kind of weird. Huh. I thought about going back to sleep, but I was like, oh, yeah, you don't have much water, man. You need to get out before the sun comes up. So that's what we're going to do. Let's make some coffee real quick and get going, man. And we're off. Beautiful morning. Bean is just peeking out above the mountain. Cool wind, but definitely not cold. Good morning, Choya. Don't stab me. Our right, goal is to make it, I don't know, four or five miles up to get some water, and then we'll reassess from there. This hill is just covered in poppies, but they're all sleeping. They're all rolled up in on themselves. I wonder what the point of that is. I mean, they all do it, so there's definitely a reason for it. Wake up, everybody. Now it's time to crawl. Look at all of y'all. Man, this would be beautiful if everybody was awake. Wake up, flowers. Hey, flowers. A little field of them. Oh, these signs are awesome. I didn't even notice that. We saw a little moonlight left. Not much. But the words Arizona Trail and the arrow both glow. See another one up there glowing from here. Well, that is really convenient. I didn't know the actual Arizona Trail part glue. Glows. Glue, is that a word? I mean, glue is, but is that the past tense of glow? It's a glowed. I don't know, but I can see that bad boy glowing. I appreciate that. I think it was a pack rat sitting on one of those rocks. It was huge. I almost thought it was a rabbit at first, but its eyes weren't glowing the right color. So if that is a pack rat, those things are huge. They're the size of city rats. Now those lights out there, enhance. Enhance again. Are twinkling something fierce. I wonder if they're fire. And the red color in the air, twinkle and fierce. They look pretty steady in this camera, but from my vantage point, I see like four or five little spots just twinkling. Well, I say they're just lights, but I hope it's not fire. Whatever, here's something shiny in a tree. What do we have? This piece of mylar balloon, or I don't know, it's a tree tag. Well, I like the plastic piece, I'm gonna take it. With the amount of road walking and night hiking that I do, I decided it was wise to cover myself front, back, and sides, and reflectors everywhere I could find to stick one on, buckles and such. Uh, a few hanging off the back that just twist in the wind. Neon green on one side, reflective on the other. You know, just anything to make me a little more noticeable so I'm less likely to get run over. 
I mean, I try to keep my eyes out and all that, but, you know, everybody sucks at driving except for me. You are healthy. Oh, see, this one's trying to get you. Throwing them all on the ground. Ah, oh, bird. You guys freaked me out. Why did you do that to me? You wait till I get all close. And then you come out of a freaking choya. Oh, he's got a nest right in there. Oh, I can see inside. Do you have babies? No. If you do, at least they're smart and being quiet. Hey, bunny, bunny. Your orange eyes just give them away. Oh, the cactus over there was crawling with rats. <clears throat> and they look just like rats, you know, the long, freaky, scaly tail and all that. Pretty fat guys. Look like a good quarter pound or more of rat. Mmm, rat burgers. This bunny came right up to me. He didn't realize I was here. He's blinded by my light. And he got as close as like right here in front of me before I made a noise grabbing my camera. And he was like, oh, screw that. But he had no idea I was there even though I was scant feet from him. Got somebody a decent size hiding behind that cactus. What are you? you you're not glowing red like a bunny. Bobcat. I got to see another bobcat. That's my second one. Huh. His eyes didn't glow the color of oh, bigger cats. He was kind of a bluish. Where'd you go, kitty pants? I want to scratch your ears. I caught something on video. Yeah, it's kind of a pain at night. I can see a lot of stuff you can't. But then again, all these colors appear that I can't see. Like that glow on the horizon. I can't see that. Coyotes. So the bobcat was decently intelligent as to where he could tell I was looking at him. He's peeking out from behind the cactus. I hit him with my lights and he ducked down. And so I take my lights off and for a second look back, I got him again. So I'm like, oh, I gotta go check that out. It didn't look big enough to be a threat. Hello. I have seen that video where that rabid bobcat attacks that well, uh, a woman and her husband. So you gotta have ninja like reactions out here. I don't know what a trekking pole is going to do against anything, but animals don't know what a trekking pole is. So in their mind, they would assume that it's a big fang or a stinger or something. But they don't know, so they'd be afraid of it. Especially if I chucked it at them. And missed, of course, because I wanted to make a loud noise on the ground. And that'll be enough to frighten away most animals. If it is an intent on eating you, well, not much is going to stop it, though. You know. Or if it's rabid. That's one of the bigger fears, really, is rabid animals because you know, they're coming for you and there's no water to hide in here. So I don't know if you guys know, but if you have something with rabies chasing you, jump in water. Everything with rabies is aquaphobic. That's what kills you. Dehydration. Well, it's nice to know some of the animals around here are smart enough to tell that I'm looking at them with a headlamp. It's like, uh-oh, he's looking at me. I better duck down, back down. And you're like, oh, shoot, is he coming this way? I'm like, yeah, I'm the curious sort. Curiosity killed the cat. Or scratched his ears. Or in reality, he ended up getting attacked by it in a bunch of stitches and some rabies shots. But in my mind, it's going to let me scratch his ears. 
here's another one of them nice little walkthroughs for us any scrabble pieces Okay, so that glow on the horizon that I can't really see. I mean, I can see a glow, but not like what you're seeing. Well, it's just that our nighttime adventure is about over. I'm really glad I found that fuel on the trail because that pretty much filled up my can. I was running a little low. Luckily, that stopped in Summer Haven or whatnot. I was able to drain some out of the hiker box. But since they didn't have a garbage can there, I just put them all back when I was done. I mean, they didn't expect me to walk out with four fuel, fuel canisters, did they? I bet they did. I, I don't understand why you wouldn't have a garbage can. Pretty basic. It's not like there's no roads out of there or anything. It's not like those huts in the whites where you have to carry everything out. There's plenty of roads, plenty of yucky mobiles around to drive everything around. But yet, no garbage cans. Bet you the yuppies all get garbage cans. Bet you money they do. It's a crappy little town. I never plan on going back. <laughs> Ever. Come up over the ridge and little Vegas is in the distance. Man, that thing is lit up. I mean, I'm zoomed in or anything because I'm not going to bother. But man, I see some huge towers. I'm assuming they're cell phone towers because what else is that huge? But man. That little town is lit up. Wonder where, wonder what it is. Should normally be about the time of the morning I'd say, hey man, let's have a safety meeting. But, yeah, not yet. Next town though has a dispensary. See, so that's as nice. Oh, I have very few needs. Oh, like that first town, I picked up $60 worth. I was able to stretch it out for what, like 15 days or something? That's not bad. Not bad. But the more I have, the more I smoke. So if I walk around with a couple ounces on me, I'd just be lit all the time. So I guess it's safer that I don't. Nah, I need it. Need, want, both. I've been seeing tire tracks from something decent sized and motorized. That kind of weird that you get it up here. Must have been somebody, even a, you know, an M um, ATVs or ATCs is way too wide for this trail. There's more of them. Yeah, just with the amount of things hanging over the choya and all that, I can't imagine it would be a good ride. And plus, you're likely to run into somebody like me because if I catch you on your ATV out here, I'm taking it from you. Think I'm kidding? <laughs> you know how I am, man. These are my lands. They're your lands, too, but, you know, uh, you know, possession nine-tenths. I'm here right now. It's mine. Um, it is not meant for motor vehicles, so, yeah, I'm, I'm taking your motor vehicle from you. If it's got keys, I'm taking your keys and walking them away with them. I'll report you to the local authorities when I get there. I'll tell them where you're at, take some pictures of you. But you're not going to ride away on that thing. I can pretty much guarantee it. I'll bear spray you first. I've kind of had a fantasy about running into those people. So, it's it's something I'm looking forward to out here. Well, not necessarily out here, just on the trails in general. Try to come by on a dirt bike or something. Oh, I'm gonna stop you for conversation and then knock you down. <laughs> mine all mine. You'd be all upset, like some guy came out of nowhere and took my keys. And now my expensive toy is stuck on a hill where it should not be. One of these days. Yeah, I mean, tracks all over the place. Oh, looks like the sun has come up. I just don't see it. It must be on the other side of that hill or something. Very peaceful morning. Of course, the temperature dropped before the sun came up. I was about to do a wardrobe change because I was sweating up some of these hills. That's why I chewed on that cactus. But, you know, you know it's going to get very cold before the sun comes up. I don't know what that phenomenon is all about. But it definitely happens. It is cold. It's just before dawn. Something about the sun about to rise makes everything cold. I 
should be about at my next water source, or I accidentally passed it up in the night, one of the two. Um, so that's where I'm planning on making my second coffee and breakfast. I got the burbles, man. My stomach's just all blah, 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 blah. I don't know if it's that breakfast burrito I ate last night. Not settling well or what. But yeah, something inside of me is unhappy. Beautiful. Well, I guess I was wrong. The sun has not risen yet. It just seemed like it had, but obviously it's gonna come out like right there. And this whole environment will change. I do a little ridge walking across here. And I bet my water's down in there somewhere. And I was correct. I see a water tank right over there. The last reports I read yesterday said she was full. And that's what a tank is supposed to be. Generally a metal, sometimes fiberglass, plastic big old tub that sits above ground that's filled with water. <clears throat> and they keep calling cow ponds tanks on the maps. And cow ponds are not tanks. Cow ponds are the opposite of tanks. Instead of being above ground, they're in ground. Instead of having no poo in it, they're filled with poo. I mean, easy to tell the difference between them. But Gut Hooks calls anything with water a tank. Unless it's flowing, you know, and they call it a stream or something. But if it's the water sitting, they call it a tank, which is really dumb. There's a big difference between cow pond or puddle and tank. Oh, it wants to peek up over. I can see the shadows of the mountains being cast into the sky. It's always kind of cool when a shadow goes up into the sky. Everything is going to change around here, which is good because I've been kind of chilly. I would much prefer to walk in sunshine and sweat. Oh, it's a beautiful morning. You can just see the sunlight starting to hit peaks out there, doing the contours and everything. There's little Vegas. News towers. And I think the two of them, they're huge. Yeah. I doubt that's the time I'm headed to. I'm hoping it's not. Either it's that bright and shiny with huge towers looks expensive. <laughs> we all know I'm a cheapskate. I'd rather have that $6 burger than that $25 burger. $6 burgers just taste way better. Especially because I can have four of them. I don't care another one of those big beautiful gates that somebody pooped all over. Ooh, that's a big bird. Which means we are almost to water. Local ride. Little Choya field. It's like a mine field. You just don't touch him, you'll be okay. It's these little guys you gotta worry about. They end up on the trail and you either kick it and it goes through your shoe and into your toes, or you step on a long piece and as you take your next step, you bring it up into your, the back of your calf of the other leg. I have a little bit of experience with that. Okay. It is a quarter mile down this road to water. Totally worth it. What is this? Oh, I've never actually seen these growing out here. I've seen them other places, but those weird little spiked balls. Is that what those vines are all about? Huh. I don't believe those are edible, but I think they're just something to do with cucumbers. I think that's what people keep calling them, like wild cucumbers, but they're not cucumbers. Uh, one of the guys on the AT actually took a bunch of those. They're slightly different shaped. They're more oval. And he put a few and put some rocks around it and made it look like a nest. 
and I took a picture and called it porcupine eggs. And people totally believed it. <laughs> okay, water tank. There's a hiker camped right over there. Um, I think his name's Joey. They have a stick for when it gets low, a bottle and a stick. That's kind of nice. He says it's really full. Oh, yes, and it is really full. And since there's no algae in here, I bet they have fish in here somewhere. I guess something like this would be full of algae with the sunlight hitting it all day. So I'm betting they have fish in here somewhere. All right, fishies. These guys are really interesting. They're hoverflies. They just hover in one spot and stare at you. They have big intimidating eyes. Oh, kind of all over the place, huh? I was, he oh, I was hearing a bunch of them. I bet people mistake them for bees, but they're just, I call them hoverflies. Look how well they hover. They have a little fight. Hi. So, water is clear. We're gonna filter this stuff using this nice ladder I have here to absorb some rays of the sun. And we'll get to filtering and making some coffee and breakfast. As we were a thousand years ago, 2,000 years ago, it's like when you said, like. Okay, cruising through a choya field. And it's getting pretty thick. There's actually, oh, choya on the trail, so it's getting dangerous. And right up in here, we're like, oh no, fork. That's a campsite in Choya. I would never camp in Choya. I mean, this is dangerously close to me. Uh, I've been hiking with Joey. We've really slowed each other's roll. You know, I'm chatty. Uh, he is too. I met him at the water tank. And he had safety supplies, so that really slowed us down too. And he did before he packed up, so it takes way longer. Been a beautiful hike this morning though. Got water and probably another five miles. It's nice, I only walked out with a liter and a half on my back. Still early morning, the air is crisp and cool. I can see those towers, those are way more cell phone towers. What are those? How we get close enough to see? I had no idea. Okay, here we have a big beautiful wash. Look at this thing. Okay, and ones like this, you have to be a little worried about a flash flood. The ones I sleep in are coming off the mountain or hill right there. So it's not like a storm 20 miles away can somehow come down and get me. But this is the kind that probably runs far enough to where you might have to worry about a flash flood here and there. Notice nothing's growing in it. Oh, down the way stuff is. But yeah, that's a pretty good sign that it floods rather often. I wouldn't necessarily recommend sleeping in it, but yeah, I still would. Flash floods are kind of rare, but then, you know, still people die. Just a cool stack of rocks. Walking on another dirt road. I got a boo-boo closing the gate. Good thing I didn't pass out. Uh, but it looks like, uh, kind of like the Sphinx. It's more like a... I don't know, what am I seeing in there? I don't know. It's definitely got a face. Maybe a chameleon. I don't know, we'll go to the other side and has a tail. Maybe that's part of his tail down there. I don't know. All right, five, past five miles or so, I've just been walking along dirt road, Choya to the left and the right. Every once in a while, trail side. Me and Joey are chatting it up. That's why I'm not recording so much. I tend not to record when people are around. It's kind of rude. We know I don't like being rude. I'm a jerk. I can be a dick. I don't try to be rude. Hope everybody brought a comb through here. I carry an extra one just in case because I found one on the trail the other day. Whew, come up over the ridge. It's been a little uphill push. Nothing. No drops and downs. But there's beautiful water down in there. And, um, and there's a hiker backpack right there. 
It's a cow's independence. You know, I'm gonna take a break down there. We haven't been able to find shade or anything anywhere to take a break. So it's been a seven mile push. You know I don't do that. I like to take a break every three or four. Okay, so this one's supposed to be solar. I see solar panels. And I'm hoping for flowing water out of something. Because I heard there was a solar pump. Maybe this hiker knows. Obviously the windmill's not doing jack. I see water on the ground. Lots of cow turds. Oh yeah, bubbling out the bottom. Um, somebody needs to seal this. Oh, it's coming out the top. It's not coming out the bottom, it's coming out the top. Oh, yeah. Of course, all the honeybees are here. Yeah, they're all over the place, but they're not going to bother us. Water is way more important. As long as I don't bother them. And you always say that right before you get stung, but I mean, they're everywhere. As we're sitting down for lunch, a little away from the water tank, this new cow, cow's actually wandered in. It's weird to have a cow come closer to you. Yeah. They're hesitant, you know, stopping at the thing, looking at us, like, nah, they seem chill. Oh, this guy's over here eating beef jerky. <laughs> I'm gonna have tuna. Lengthy road walk, or wash walk, really, it's all sand. But there's some beautiful rocks. Only that one big one and a little one off to the side. Coming back to the trail. It's been a pretty pleasant day. Haven't had to break out the umbrella. Only using one stick. It's been pretty mellow, just rolling hills. Nobody's been stabbed by a choya yet. That's always good stuff. Oh, it's about 12.30. I got three liters on my back. Um, the next water is a cache. I try not to trust those. That's why I have three liters for seven miles. Just in case it's not there, I, you know, I'm not dead. I can get help or do something. Something will happen. There is water there. Golden. It'll make it easier. But if not, figure it out from there. Plenty of time to make seven miles. I don't really feel like doing seven miles. But yeah, that would give me a 20-ish mile day or so. I guess I'm ready for those. The sun is ablaze high in the sky. Hey, we're just down there a minute ago. Still snowy covered mountain. So I broke out the umbrella. It only makes sense. You're making a tiny shadow. You might as well reflect it all back into space with your silvery umbrella. Take that, son. I'll blind you back. But better hot than cold. It's not hot. It's just the sun is pretty intense. Some of these have red leaves, some green. Right next to each other. How convenient. It is very exposed out here. The sun is intense, but it's probably only in the 80s. As long as you block out the sun, so you don't see much of me sticking out. You don't hold the umbrella right above your head like it's raining. You hold it in the direction of the sun, man. You're always having to adjust it anyway. You're constantly moving left and right, and squiggling around the trail. There's overhanging branches and cacti and whatnot. I tried attaching it to my vest or to my backpack the other day, but I, I just couldn't do it because there's just little grabby things all over here. You gotta move out of their way. They're not gonna move out of yours. This is their house. But yeah, there's just nowhere to chill, relax. I would not want to do this without an umbrella. And it's only gonna get hotter from here on out. Yeah. You know spring in Arizona only lasts a couple weeks. It goes from not summer to spring for two weeks and then summer. We don't really have a winter here. Well, maybe up on some high mountains we have some winter, but nowhere else. Um, 
the other side of the hill. It's pretty much a desolate wasteland with a red mountain. It's the most interesting thing around, so I hope we're headed to it. Not necessarily up it this heat though, I tell you that. He didn't bring an umbrella, he's suffering. I'm gonna let him borrow mine a minute just so I can feel the difference between night and day. Without the sunshine, it's rather pleasant. It's a little after one, the heat of the day, so I'm just gonna chill, man, since I don't really have an agenda. I hung my umbrella in the tree to give me as much shade as I can get. I guess my head is sticking out, but I got a hat on, but the rest of my body is covered in the shadow. Ah, oh, a nice mellow day though, just a little up, a little down. Yeah, sweating, sweating out a little bit, you know, but nothing really bad. Got plenty of water on me. So I'm gonna kick it here for, I'm planning on a good half hour or so, might as well. Let some heat pass by, cause when you don't have agendas, why would you hike in the heat of the day unless, like, I mean, it is desolate around here. I'm going to change views. But this is what we got to deal with. There's not much shade. My shadow, you know, this is what the tree I'm hiding behind looks like, but I'm sitting in my umbrella shade. So I am good all around, except for just the little tippity top of my head when I lean forward. But, yeah. So sometimes that does restrict you. For the past few miles, it's been, like, um, a lot of it's been ridge walking as well as the up and down, so it's just it's super exposed because you're on a ridge and there's nothing but choya. So you couldn't take a break if you wanted to, which is pushing me farther than I want to go today, but you know, I do what the trail tells me to do. So if she doesn't give me rest spots and all that, then I just keep walking. So there's a reason for everything. She's training me for the, the hotter, more desolate places that I'll be walking. Okay, so this is the first gate like this. It's got some symbolic stuff going on in there. I don't know what it means, but I know it means something. And the good old chain latch system. That's actually one of my favorites. You just put it through the slit right there. How can you miss? Yeah, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Choya, choya everywhere. Glad I brought my own shade, man. You can tell he's cooking. What is that? It's like a pile of bones or something. I don't know how close we get to it. I had to be her off trail. I, I gotta see that. That's a huge pile of bones. What the hell is this? A rhino? Look at that. Wow. That's a hip bones. No head. Just so bleached and stacked. There's a jaw or two. Huh, crazy. Been on the jab. They're incredibly shallow tap roots for something so big and heavy. Because that's solid water. It weighs a lot. But its root system is just so puny. They can grow right out of rocks. This is a whole different kind of choya. I'm assuming it's still a choya. It's got all the characteristics. And it's growing in a choya field. Um, but I'm not familiar with it. And since I'm in no hurry, 
This is the closest thing I found to shade. I am going to sit in it for a while. Slip into the joy. Well protected on all sides. That counts as shade here. Thank you, tree. You're definitely losing some salts and such. So I'm gonna chill here. Use my backpack as a seat. Backpack actually make pretty comfortable chairs. As long as you pack your stuff in it. This twig's in my way. Excuse me. It's not like you're alive anyway. Oh. Okay, that's pretty nice. <sighs> I almost fell asleep at the other place. I was there for like 20 minutes. And almost fell asleep, but not quite. Probably could hear, but I think I'm just going to save it. I'm go to bed early. I'm going to get this next water source. Well, if there's water there. Uh, that's probably, I'm going to find somewhere to camp right after that. So I, I don't think that's more like three miles or so. I'm filming at this angle to block the sun for you. Yeah. Um, so Joey's a good dude. I like hiking with him. You know, he's, he's kind of talkative as I am. Maybe not as much as I am. Uh, he's carried on now. I've, I've decided to take rests without him. You know, I had to have a little safety meeting. He hooked me up with a little nug of indica, which is not my favorite, but you know, it wasn't his either. That's why I gave it up. It slows me down a little bit, but it puts me in the proper headspace to enjoy myself even amongst, you know, the, the choyas. Uh, small world. He is Darwin's barista. Yeah. Uh, Darwin orders the most pretentious drink that you can imagine. I couldn't even remember it because, you know, when he told me he was, I was like, what does he drink? And it was this long listed thing. And I was like, of course, you know, I am not shocked because I go into those places. So I'm like, can I get a coffee? You know, that's simple. Actually, I asked for a large, but they have fancy names for them all. So they, they don't do large. And I have to, you know, explain it to like your largest size big, you know, but they got fancy names. But anyway. Uh, he's a cool cat. I'm liking him. Uh, we're both getting off on the same stop. He's headed somewhere else. or some hostel he's headed to or something. I can't remember what he called it, but it was called Yacht Club. I guess that was kind of a joke because it's in the middle of the desert. I don't know. Um, but the name makes me think expensive, but he's like, no, 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 contrary. So maybe I'll check that out, but I'm headed to Kearney. He's headed somewhere else. You know. um, so we'll run into each other again. Seems to be healing. I got a big scab going on. It's so three-dimensional. It's weird for me to not, never have picked a scab, but since I can't see it, I don't want to mess with it too much. But it's feeling pretty good. Wisdom tooth isn't bothering me as much. That's nice. It's still a decent-sized hole. I get food stuck in it every time I eat. So anytime I eat anything, I have to do a good hard swish to make sure there's nothing in there because there's always something in there. Can't wait for that hole to go away. Choppers are feeling pretty good. Yeah, they seem to be healing. Getting used to wearing glasses. Oh, it changes. I'm getting old. All right, so it's uh, probably like 345 or so. The heat of the day has passed more or less. It's still hot by most people's standards. The sun's just decently intense. I've opted to go shirtless because I need to start working on my base tan. I'm going to be out in the desert for quite a while. And a tan is kind of part of gear. Something you really want to have. I don't like slathering sunscreen on me all the time. I use a little bit here and there when I see people putting on theirs. Nobody says no. And I'm like, hey, can I get a little bit of that? But I rarely do even do that. Just trying to build up a tan. I've got like three miles to go, man. And hours to get there. So I'm just going to mosey and see what happens. We've entered spider territory. There's been a whole lot of those things for the past while. Some more. And down inside there is a teeny tiny little spider general. I've never seen a big one come out of there. Can I just see them peeking at you from the rim because they can feel you coming. Or see ya, I assume feel though. So 
so important things to look out for on the trail is you're you know you're coming down the way you see the blaze so you're like hey cool and then you'd want to keep going straight because there's a trail but somebody's put some wood in front of the way so just even a stick crossing your path should like alert you that maybe it's not the path and then you look over here and you can see trekking pole slide marks right there that's all hiker sign to me you know so i don't even need to check the map i know it's this way i should check the map but i'm not even gonna because a hiker sign very rarely leads you astray not that I haven't walked over a few in my time, but you know, I, I've learned to look for the little things, like scrabble pieces. I just met a couple ladies out here. They're doing the Grand Enchantment Trail, the whole thing. I don't know if this is part of it. I didn't actually ask, but uh, they also told me that there, the water is, there's not a cache there, but somebody brought a five gallon jerry can and wrote on it, you know, that it's trail magic. So that's pretty awesome. I still have two liters on me because I try not to rely on those things. But the next water would be, I think, seven or eight miles after that. Yeah, that's, I can totally do that in two liters. I just wouldn't have, you know, it's, yeah, I totally could do that. So yeah, I wouldn't stress that anyway. And let's course the water after that's gone. Ooh, no, um, it said it was there. And all the tanks have been very full. It was a wet year. But try not to rely on those uh, boxes, man. Unless they're the huge ones, you know, the PCT has those ones where it's, you know, tons of water, hundreds of gallons that people put out there for you. But these ones where the thing says, hey, eight gallons left, because the last update was yesterday, it said 10 gallons. And those ladies said it's dry today. 10 gallons doesn't last that long. We all take pretty much a gallon. And there's not just Nobos, there's Sobos as well. Oh, I forgot to ask them about Scrabble pieces. Oh, I've been asking Sobos, because, you know, they, they have more information than I do. That's how the, the, the kind of hiker uh, information passes, you know. I don't have these people's phone numbers and stuff. I can't text. So I wait and chat everybody up. It's what I do. So the moon is just above the horizon. We're all a little bit been up there for a couple hours. But I'm definitely going to have moonlight hike by for the morning. The sun's almost down. So, yeah. It'll be bright all night. It'll be lit in my tent. But... I've got the bat hat I pull down over my eyes, so I don't see it. So I think I see the RV they're talking about. That hopefully has water at it. Because if so, that means I can just camp wherever I want after that. So lucked out, there was water and a little trail magic waiting for us from bike packers. They've got a rig right here. You can tell by their stickers around here that they've gotten around yeah. <laughs> yeah they've been places so they're bike packing up the trail a bit they got a ride up there they're coming back in a couple of days but they left us some goodies i got an avocado i don't even like avocados but you know they're, they're good for you so i'm going to eat it and it's going bad so it needs to be eaten um some free dry, fry, freeze dried chicken fried rice freeze dried chicken fried rice yeah that's it and some chocolate that's totally melted, but as soon as it cools down, it will not be melted chocolate anymore. That's why everybody was passing it up. Who wants melted chocolate in the desert? Um, so I decided to camp where they you know, have a spot. You don't have to pay out here or anything, so you know, I, I camp here regardless, but it's, you know, it's nice that they allow us to, you know. They, they, they've obviously reserved it. They put their stuff here. They, they were first. But, you know, so I, I was like, oh, I'll just stop right here then, man. I was going to go off looking for a spot, but, you know, why bother when everything's here? So it's only 12 miles till the next water. Um, I've got plenty. Uh, and I'm going to do that in the morning before the sun comes up. Let's eat some food now. Okay, so they have their chicken fried rice. I'm probably only going to do like half of this. Uh, pretty squishy avocado, but that just means it's ripe, right? I don't generally eat these things, but I'm going to eat it. Um, let's see. I did a, a modification of my tent, and I can get my door to stay open. They got all these extra strings on this thing because you need to tie it down in a storm, but, like, this thing already has tons of pegs. I don't think I'll ever need those strings, so I just cut it to the size I need and use their little thingy. Boom, my door stays open because I don't like those rolly things and you, know, you got to do little snaps around and stuff. I'm not a fan, man, so I can keep it wide open. They got chairs, so I'm sitting in a chair like a king. It's 
pretty nice. We got Blaze on over there. He's got a little bit of service, so he's able to talk. He's the only other person that's been updating the water other than myself. So when I look forward, if anybody has updated, it's going to be this guy. So it's nice to run into him. He's doing big mild days. So, yeah, I'm, I'm actually surprised I caught him. I think he did almost a 30 today. I did like a 20. You know, and that's more than enough for me, man. Uh, but I'm really, really grateful these people had this in the spot and this avocado and the food and the, and the chocolates. Oh, it's going to be a nice mellow night instead of like, you know, wandering off and hoping. I always find a spot, but it's just nice to have one with a chair. Mm. Oh, it was great. And while he was talking to whoever he was talking to, he said, I'm with Nightcrawl. He's a legendary hiker. I was like, what, me, legendary? You know, in my own mind. But it's cool when people have heard of you and not negative things. All right, so we're just going to chill, man. Oh, they also have whiskey in there, so I am a little lit. Um, why not? You know, I'm on vacation, right? Well, it's never been good. I mean, not this time. Okay, so the avocado is pretty much perfect. Cut it into little pieces. I'm just going to eat it out with a spoon. I don't know how much water to add to this stuff, so, you know, hey, it looks pretty good. I'm just going to let it sit and do its thing and hope it's not all crunchy and gross. Doesn't matter me that regardless. So I was a little hungry and I thought I ate the whole thing of chicken fried rice and you know, scraped that avocado pretty much clean. I mean, I can go in there and get a little bit more, but mm, that's so bright green in this camera. And I'm doing the old cleaning that out and then drinking the gunk. And I'm still kind of hungry. I might have to dig in my bag and get something else. I might want a carnation instant breakfast, man. It's kind of nice out right now. Sit here in my chair and sip some cocoa. So my charger works really well, the solar charger. I uh, used up all my battery last night uploading a movie. It took me like three days to upload. Then I had a little service last night, so I just plugged my big battery into the phone and just let it run all night. And when I woke up, my phone was down to 40% and this thing was empty. So just carrying it around all day, I got four bars again on this thing. So that's really nice. It is nice that this solar charger can charge one of these in a day without like trying you know without sitting in the sun just hanging off the back of my pack because uh, this thing will charge my phone like three times so that really helps out that it charges that much i hate being stuck in a town right because one of these takes you know hours so you're just stuck at that restaurant or whatever while your stuff's charging i never liked that so you know i have taken that out of the equation i hate going into a town just for power <clears throat> so now I can kick back, and since I don't have service, I'm going to edit some movies. Yeah, okay. Good night. See you tomorrow.